Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Grade 12, this is a video lesson recording for Practical Research 2, Module 5, Data Presentation and Interpretation. So last time we were talking about data collection and I was hoping that your research instruments are good and they are prepared so that we can move forward into conducting your study. Now, after you have conducted your study, of course, you will have data. And what are you going to do with the data? So after data gathering, first, you will need to encode and organize your data. So in order for the statistician, or in this case, you, or I will help you in doing the statistical treatment, then you have to organize your data in preparation for the statistical treatment. And then next, you also have to undergo your data onto the statistical treatment. Now, it depends what type of statistical treatment you are going to use. In your outline defense, nabanggit na natin yan, na specify na natin sa bawat research study na propose meron na tayong itinalaga na uh, statistical treatment for that one. Next, afterwards, you have to present the data in a visual or graphical way. Okay? And also, you have to write the interpretation because the graphical or visual presentation is not enough. Okay? Also, in the interpretation part, you can simply interpret the graph or the table. But in trying to answer your research objectives or questions, you would have to find support from your review of related literature or your theoretical framework. Kaya nga napag-usapan na rin natin yan before kung ano yung importansya, bakit tayo gumagawa ng review of related literature. And lastly, you have to proofread and edit your work. Of course, uh, in some cases, especially sa mga university, you would need to have an English critique for this one. So, binabayaran itong mga tao na ito no, for their services. But in our case, it will be you and then I will try to check if there is uh, some errors maybe or something that can be improved in your paper. So techniques in data processing. First, we have editing. Editing is a process wherein the collected data are checked. Editing is for checking the consistency, accuracy, organization, and clarity of the data that you have collected. Because sometimes, looking at your data, especially uh, you are dealing with numbers, right? Sometimes they might be wrong. Sometimes hindi maayos ang pagkakasulat ng estudyante or ng respondents mo. And sometimes there are missing data. Especially during face-to-face. -face, um, some students, you know, don't answer items or even forget to answer items. So again, a reminder for those who are going to use Google Form, make each item required. Okay? Para masagutan talaga nila at wala kayong missing data. Next, we have coding. It's a process wherein the collected data are categorized and organized. So, coding is done to assign numerical value to specific indicator, especially yung abstract or quantitative in nature, or something that cannot be quantified by nature. For example, gender. So, if you're going to use gender in your analysis and interpretation later on, so, kailangan mo siyang lagyan ng numerical assignment. So, for example, you're going to use one for male, and two for female, or perhaps for the salary or the um, employment status, you can use zero for unemployed, and then one for government employee, or two for private employee. So, depende, again, sa'yo, no? Basta ang coding is that you're going to assign um, numbers to your data that are qualitative in nature. Next, tabulation. So, ang tabulation is itabulate mo na ang iyong data you have to arrange it in a tabular form. It can be for interpretation agad-agad or you are trying to tabulate para later on, madali na lang siyang gawan ng statistical analysis. So, data presentation and interpretation. What is data presentation? You have to present your data visually or graphically using non-prose materials. And what are non-prose materials? We have graphs maybe, bars, tables, charts, diagrams, illustrations, drawings, maps, video clips, etc. And uh, yung mga iba nga, no, nagagawa pa ng animation, 
para lang mag-present ng data. So, kayo ang bahala kung ano ang madali para sa inyo. So, the following would be some of the commonly used data presentation for your data. Most commonly used is table. You know, tables are easy to create, they are formal, they look clean, you know, so madali na lang para sa iyo mag-present ng data. So, as you can see, we have here an example of a table. Now, kung gagawa kayo ng table, guys, make sure that you have headings and that your headings are actually making sense, okay? Yung bang, it represents what this data is all about, okay? So, for example, this one, so senior high school students, and then you have pre-test uh, average, and then post-test average, and then total average, and you have the overall average here. And then try to arrange the table in a manner that it is understandable, okay? At huwag kalimutan, guys, when it comes to um, visual representation, kailangan meron siyang title. Okay, so for example, this one, you have table 1, comparison between the average scores of male and female senior high school students in reading comprehension test. Now, your title should also describe what is in the table. Okay, so try to be as descriptive as possible. Okay, guys, when it when we say title, title pa lang siya, ha? although gina-describe mo na yung laman ng table, hindi ka pa nag explain Okay? Nag-describe ka pa lang. It's just the title. Now, if you're going to say the interpretation part, you can interpret this table this way. So, the table above shows the average scores in pre-test and post-test reading comprehension of male and female students. From this, you can relate that the female students got higher scores after the special reading literacy program was conducted. The overall average of the entire senior high school population, 88.2, is considered to be above average in terms of nationwide reading comprehension. Now, this interpretation, guys, will be based on your research objectives. Okay? Hindi tayo na basta-basta lang mag-interpret or mag-state ng mga bagay-bagay na obvious sa isang table. No? So, for this example, it might be that the in this example, is that it is trying to compare the performance of boys and girls in reading comprehension. And there was this special reading literacy program that was conducted to be an independent variable that will affect the dependent variable, which is probably reading comprehension uh, level of the students. Okay? Another example are graphs. And we have different types of graphs. But in this module, we are just going to give examples on bar graph, line graph, and pie charts. Okay? So this is an example of a bar graph. So as you can see, it has a title and it shows the data in a bar graph. So for this one, figure one, it shows the preferred COVID-19 vaccines of senior high school students at Wisdom Islamic School, Davao City Incorporated, school year 2020. 2021. So from this, you can see, you know, because it's a graph, you can already see the preference of the senior high school students. It is far better than writing your results in text. That is the main point why we visually represent data. So we can interpret it this way. The figure above shows the preferred COVID-19 vaccine among the senior high school students of Wisdom Islamic School enrolled at school year 2020-2021. This clearly shows the high inclination of the students towards Pfizer vaccines, 14 out of 20 grade 11 students and 11 out of 20 grade 12 students. Sinovac got the lowest preference having a total of 3 votes out of 40 senior high school students. Now. Again, no, the context, maybe, of this example is that it is trying to find the preferred COVID-19 vaccine of senior high school students. Therefore, the interpretation will, of course, explain kung ano mga ba ang brand ng vaccine na may mas maraming vote among the senior high school students. Now, let's have an example of a line graph. For line graph, this is an example monthly net income of different online shopping apps in the first quarter year 2020. Guys, just to give you um, a reminder, 
As you can see, figure 2 na ito siya. Guys, yung figures niyo it should be numbered. Okay? If you are going to use more than one table, so you have table 1, table 2, table 3, table 4. Okay? Pag figure naman, if you are going to use more than one figure, it might be a picture, it might be a graph, it might be something else, you know, it can be a scatter plot. Depende, figure pa rin yan siya. So, kailangan ang inyong mga figures ay numbered din. So, this particular example, we can actually interpret it this way. So, figure 2 shows the estimated monthly income of the different online shopping apps in the first quarter of the year 2020. In actual, the figures are in 100,000 Philippine Peso. This shows that in the month of February, Shopee gained a lot of profit. So you can see it's highest, uh, it's the one at the highest peak in February, but showed a steady decline up until the month of April. Similar trend can be seen from Lazada. Alibaba, on the other hand, seems to be consistent with their income with little variation. So, in this particular example, the study is just trying to compare the monthly net income of different shopping apps. So, you have to look into the graph and explain with the same context as your research study. Okay, so this is our final example, pie charts. So, this is a pie chart representing the vaccination status of senior high school students as of March 2022. So, as you can see, this one represents the students who got their first dose. And then, the orange part are fully vaccinated students. And the gray part is without vaccination. So, figure 3, senior high school vaccination status as of March 2022. Now, we can interpret this pie chart as figure 3 illustrates the number of senior high school students who are fully vaccinated on their first dose and without vaccination yet. It is recorded that 29 out of 50 students have taken their first dose and 16 are fully vaccinated. However, 5 out of 50 students haven't taken their first dose of the vaccine yet. So this study is just a descriptive uh, research about the vaccination status of the students. But for example, if this study also includes like correlation later on perhaps no if for example gusto niyang gamitin itong data na ito later on to include the readiness of the students towards the incoming face-to-face -face classes next school year then baka maiba yung interpretation later on so again guys ha if you have a figure it should have a title a figure number and it should have an a paragraph that explains or describes what is in that um, graph, okay, or table or figure, okay? So, that is all for this module, guys. Inshallah, I will be, I will be recording a video lesson for data presentation and interpretation with statistical techniques or treatment and with data analysis na rin. So, reminder, please submit drafts of your Chapter 3, Methodology by March 21, 2022. Again, guys, nagahabol na tayo ng oras. So, I hope you will submit all of your requirements. So, thank you so much for watching this video lesson. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illa ant. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.